Yo, what's up guys? Redbird here, back with another New World video. Today we're going to go through my Spear Hammer DPS Utility build for Mutations and Expeditions. A pretty straightforward build here, just has a ton of utility and really top tier DPS as well. So, of course, first, let's talk about stat distribution. So, um, generally you're going to use 150 Strength, 250 Dex, and 100 Con. Now, if you're having trouble with survivability, you can back off on the strength a little bit, go ahead and drop it down to 100, and then and then kick your con up to 150. Uh, in mutations, obviously, for your equip weight, you're gonna have medium armor, so you got a lot of a little bit of extra um, survivability there as well with the increased resistances. Uh, we have a video up on on what the difference is between light and medium armor. You can go check that out uh, for the equip weight. I'll try to remember to link that in the show notes below. One of the big reasons that we're using a medium equip weight on this build. It's for the extra dodge. Uh, the rotation, uh, the DPS rotation of the spear requires you to dodge in between each of the ability uses. So we got to keep those dodges up at all times. Having the extra dodge and the discounted uh, cost of dodge definitely help out there uh, with the dex perk. Uh, also, since you're running 100 con, it does help again with survivability. So just uh, medium armor is a great play for this build. Uh, you got a lot of extra elemental resistance for the mutations as well. Uh, so that's where all of that comes from. Uh, now here goes the, the interesting part. I think most people always ask these questions are gear perk priority. And, and again, if you, if you have questions about this, uh, you can go check out the build over at newworldfans.com. I will link, uh, the, the build in the show notes as well here, but, but first as uh, a spear now, uh, PV, P, PVE which is what this build is for, is a little bit different uh, stat-wise. I think generally as a DPS player, you don't want Keen at all. Uh, you have the opportunity to stand behind your enemy and, and perform a backstab, uh, which is a guaranteed crit. So we jump right to Vicious on the spear. Uh, vicious, keenly empowered. That is every time you crit, you stack empowered. You basically can keep your empowered stacked at the max stacks for this perk. And then uh, the third perk here is basically optimally, you want the bane of the enemy that you're going to fight. Uh, if you do not or cannot afford to switch back and forth between weapons when you're in between mutations, because we all know it does cost a lot of umbral shards to get your weapons up to 625, go ahead and just use enchanted. Uh, on your spear and that way it will kind of reduce weapon swapping and having to level multiple weapons between each week's mutation. Uh, Warhammer, uh, this is an interesting one I think is you want Sundering Shockwave on your Warhammer here on the back bar uh, just because uh, you want to free up the perks on your armor uh, for other defensive perks. Uh, so, so Sundering Shockwave, really you're only using it while you have the hammer out anyways, and you're not you dealing damage with the hammer either. So really, we don't really care about that. So Sundering Shockwave is good, keenly empowered, keenly fortified, and then vicious, just to get a little bit of extra damage out of your hammer. All right, so moving on to armor priority perks, we're gonna look for refreshing evasion or refreshing. Now, uh, there's a little bit of debate here because you're dodging so much with the spear. Which one's better for this build? Refreshing is generally uh, the best just because it does reduce all of your cooldowns uh, effectively, whereas uh, Refreshing Evasion only reduces your active weapon cooldowns. So, you know, either one is really good here. Just look for one of those two. Ward of the appropriate enemy is the next perk we're looking for. Again, this is very hard to min-max. I mean, the, the, the availability of gear is a problem. And then also just the availability of umbral shards, having to spend your umbral shards on your armor from uh, weapon set to weapon set or armor set to armor set rather, you're just gonna need to pick uh, one set of armor and go with it until you get to 625, until you're running mutation tens, and then start to look for a gear set for each particular enemy site type because then you can start pushing your damage higher, uh, taking more offensive uh, stance in your stat priority and stuff like that. Uh, but but again, uh, this is kind of a min-maxed build already, so just make sure that you can survive, uh, you know, with your elemental resistance and your physical resistance. You can all obviously titrate that with gems. We're going to talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, but but generally, uh, min-maxed here, you're going to want refreshing, the ward of the appropriate enemy, and the protection perk of the appropriate mutation. So Hellfire... Uh, you would want the fire protection on your armor. And for the weapon specific perks on your armor, you're going to want a Sundering Shockwave, like we talked before on your on your hammer, 
uh, Fortifying Perforate, and then a Feebling Skewer. Uh, these are two or three of the weapon perks that really kind of add a little bit of survivability and or for the group. So good utility there if you have those. And remember, these do not stack. So don't, you don't, you only need one of these uh, between your weapons and armor here. On um, Jewelry Perks, uh, these are pretty standard, guys. Nothing new here, uh, except for maybe if you're like completely min-maxed. You, you got Health and Divine on your necklace. And then uh, for those of you who don't know, the necklace is also home for protection as well. So you can get fire or void protection based off of what mutation you're running. Again, not necessary as you're pushing mutations, but if you're trying to completely min-max your character, it'd be great to have this on here. You can basically, if you get enough of these protections on your on your armor and then run the appropriate gems, definitely don't have to worry as much about them as you move forward uh, the ring uh, you want thrust damage on your ring it's a big increase to dps there refreshing or refreshing evasion whatever one and then hardy or bloodletting so if you are not having stamina management issues go ahead and get the extra bleed damage there you are going to have a pretty heavy bleed up at all times uh, so that buffs dps just a little bit more there too and then of course on the earring we're doing refreshing toast basically you want refreshing toast on any earring if you're looking for an earring and you want to know if it's good it's got to have refreshing toast the the potion cooldown is second to none it is in a tier of its own on earring perks so make sure you have refreshing toast on your earring refreshing or refreshing evasion and then regenerating or nimble again if you're not having stamina management issues just get the regenerate it helps a little bit with survivability there your healer will appreciate it all right guys so gems and consumables as we move forward here Again, it's simply put, as you're pushing mutations, just put opals in all of your armor. It gives you a flat rate of elemental damage reduction. It's great across the board, and you won't be able to switch out your gems every week. The mutation changes, which can be very expensive, especially now that most people are taking advantage of the tier five gem prices. So just put opals in your gem and or your armor. Use the same set of armor as you're pushing these mutations. And, and using your humble shards and you're not gonna have to worry about switching until you get to like end game end game where you can start min maxing all your armor sets now of course in the advanced gym guide you're gonna use fire damage reduction gems uh, i think they're rubies for uh your armor when it's hellfire and then vice versa when it's void you use the amethyst um ancients uh so here here's here's where it kind of gets a little bit crazy it's your weapon gem and I'm in maxis for you guys as well in the guide, uh, but just so we're clear in this video, uh, you, for the ancients, you're going to use a lightning gem in both of your weapons here. Uh, it does increase DPS slightly, so you want to do that. On the corrupted side of things, uh, you want an opal in your spear because you can't improve uh, the thrust damage or you can't improve upon the thrust damage enough to not have the opal and get the 15% the damage increase from... Uh, low stamina or not full stamina rather and then you want an arcane gem and your hammer it just increases dps just a little bit there an angry earth uh or garden of genesis rather you want fire and then an amarine you're gonna whenever these mutations come you're gonna want amber in both uh again guys uh you know the corrupted one the tempest heart the new dungeon coming out put the opal in your spear and not the arcane gem i know it's a little bit tempting to try to get that extra damage from the arcane but you can get actually get more damage from the opal uh, we kind of found out so so do the opal so uh, you know food and consumables uh, this is just a pretty open-ended statement just make sure you hit the stat thresholds the 150 strength the 250 dex and the 100 con or if you have to switch for survivability the 150 con and the 100 strength because you know that's what food is for it's just to supplement the gear that you have and make sure that you're hitting the thresholds so you know here are the ones I recommend because they're just cheaper. It's carrot cake and fall har harvest turkey. They will provide you with a, either strength con or dex strength and 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 uh, just help you supplement your gear a little bit. Uh, boss DPS rotation. Now here's the, the big meat and potatoes I think you guys are all looking for. Uh, and this is how you run the build and the mutation. So this is your primary DPS rotation for trash. We'll start there. Basically, you're, you're, you're helping keep these mobs CC'd with Wrecking Ball and Shockwave. Again, it's so important. I think people just are always fixated on what weapons do the most damage. But when you're doing these trash bowls and these trash bowls have all these modifiers, you need to keep these bad boys CC'd as much as possible. We're talking Gravwell, Wrecking Ball, Shockwave, etc., etc., to keep these mobs at bay and making sure they're not attacking because you're already having to deal with the mutation uh, damage or the mutation mechanics. 
Uh, so again, guys, you have Wrecking Ball and Shockwave on your hammer. Just make sure that you're using those on cooldown to keep these bosses uh, subdued. I oftentimes as a DPS find it necessary to peel off to an archer or maybe even one of the mace guys in uh, Garden of Genesis and just keep them uh, CC locked with your Volt Kick, Wrecking Ball, and Shockwave. It'll just help you uh, help the group stay alive, help the mobs stay managed and make sure that you're not getting pin shot through your entire group or you know, you're getting uh, the whirlwind attack that just basically does tons of damage. And, and if you're all stacked up, uh, you're definitely going to take a, a massive hit of damage. So you may, again, use your CC during these trash rotations, uh, the Volt Kick, Wrecking Ball, and Shockwave, and then add in your damage rotation that we're going to talk about later in the boss fight. So here is the boss DPS here uh, for Spear. Obviously, first you want to use Armor Breaker on your hammer. Then you're going to swap. And here it is, boys. You perforate. Uh, it applies the rends that you need to have on the enemy. So now at this point, you should have armor breaker and perforate up for the rest of the rotation. You're going to dodge light attack, which is important. It lines up your character, helps you get ready to use your next ability to make sure you're in range of that hit because you don't want to miss abilities here. The cooldowns are important. And again, these dodges are going to help you reduce the cooldown to where you can keep doing this over and over and over again if you're successfully landing these abilities. So again, uh, armor breaker into perforate, then dodge, light attack, skewer, dodge, light attack, bolt kick, dodge, light attack, and then you hit, you should have perforate up again. And it's just rinse and repeat. Now, you will want to reapply armor breaker when you can. Don't stop your spear DPS rotation to do it unless you don't have another hammer in the group that's applying it. Uh, you know, you, you're going to do your part in keeping armor breaker up, of course. But, dude, the amount of DPS you can do on the sphere if you're keeping your rotation up and keeping in rhythm with the dodging and the light attacks is pretty nuts. Uh, it's pretty invaluable on these bosses to make sure you're doing decent DPS to make sure you're going to get through these boss fights in a timely manner, making sure you can dodge your mechanics if you can, because everybody knows good DPS uh, can shorten these fights significantly and make them a lot easier. Uh, so that's the rotation, guys. Uh, that's the build, even. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, don't forget to check out my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash redbird. I do have, I do play this build all the time in mutation. So if you have questions, you can come ask them live for me. And then more especially, guys, go check out newworldfans.com. This build's over there around a ton of other builds uh, that you might be looking for for your DPS mutation needs. R arenas are coming. We have a ton of PvP builds up over there as well uh, for those. And, and we'll continue to put more curated builds up. That's one of our goals uh, in the short term is just to make sure we're getting those up for you guys. Again, uh, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. And, and guys, you got to have the spear hammer build or just at least a hammer and a spear in each group that you run in mutations because, man, the hammer and the spear rends keep your all of your DPS flowing at high amounts. And then the spear alone does a ton of DPS as well. All right, guys. Uh, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you in another video.